Since you're watching my channel and watching this video in particular, you probably watch other channels that share similar content on retro and vintage computing. You may have some vintage computers yourself. You may not. You may be interested in possibly collecting some vintage computers. Well, in today's video, I want to talk about a less daunting way of getting a system up and running, an Atari ST system up and running that's hopefully less expensive and still very functional. Because if you look at all the stuff, the hardware here, it can be very daunting to figure out how to get a monitor, floppy disk drive, floppy disks, uh, power supplies, mouse, joystick, etc., etc., etc. And as you keep adding those things up, it adds up cost, it adds up uncertainty. Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? So, like I said, I'm going to go down a path of walking you through the side cart because I think this can help get people up and running with the Atari ST hardware faster, quicker, easier, and cheaper. Let's get to it. This 520ST has no floppy disk drive included, has no internal power supply. And as such, these are kind of orphans. When you want to look for an Atari ST, say on eBay, and because of that, you oftentimes can find them at a really low price because the folks that are asking like two, three, four, five hundred dollars for these, they don't get it. It'll eventually go down pretty dramatically. And you can generally find these for under $100 US as of today, which is or February 2024. And so what I wanted to do is walk through the process. I acquired one of these 520 STs off of eBay. It has arrived and I'm going to go through the process of getting it set up and using just this and a few other things. There are, there are some minimal other things that you do need in order to get it up and running. All right, let's get this guy open. Do a quick unboxing. All right, let's open this guy up. Oh, they did a good job packing it. It can be difficult sometimes. Well, hmm, maybe not so good a job. have it. It's a little on the dirty side, but we can get working with it. There we go. First things first. I have a perfectly functioning power supply. We'll test it out. See if we get a good signal output, and then we will start testing the side card in it. That guy there. Monitor on. All right. We have an issue. However, I think we can fix this relatively easily. My guess is it's probably reseeding some chips. Power off, open up my friend. Like I said before, these Atari STs, they're pretty darn robust. We're missing a couple, uh, one screw it looks like. shield is looking a little, I don't know, I see a lot of fingerprints on that guy. There we go. 
A lot of folks like to try to take off the RF shielding while it's still in the case. It's actually, I think, easier to take this, the RF shielding, the whole motherboard out all at once and then remove the RF shielding. There we have it. And it looks like it's in decent shape here. But what we can do is we can just do some reseating. Just reseat a couple of chips. And let's take a look, see if that did anything. As simple as that. I can pull things out, put some deoxid in. I'm gonna go the quick and dirty approach. Let's put some pressure on them. What that says is it says the keyboard's disconnected. It's amazing <laughs> what just a little bit of reseating can do. Now, that said, my, my just pressure on this is not enough, right? So what I will do is I will take out all the chips, apply some deoxid, and then restart it, and then uh, put them back in. All right, we have all of the chips out, carefully extracted using various different methodologies. This, this, very careful application of screwdrivers as well in some instances. And we'll just do a little bit of deoxid here. Oh, there we go. All right, now we put the chips back in. One by time, one. We'll start with a shifter chip here. Now we power back on just to test, make sure I didn't do anything more damage than I fixed. And that means that the keyboard isn't plugged in, but it's gonna boot up just fine. And in just a second, it'll take a little bit. Oh, we're getting bombs. I did damage. Here's where we have one of the ROM pins that came out and I'm sure that's the only reason why we're having the issues. Let's disconnect the power. And as you can see, we had one pin come out. We will fix that guy. Oh, actually, we had two pins. Ooh. Ah, see, there we are. All right. Pins are straight enough, I believe. And this time, I'm gonna have my special eyes on it to make sure I don't repeat that same situation there. Good, looks good. All right, let's go back to powering it on. You know what, I'm gonna hook up the keyboard so we don't have to hear the constant beeping. I kind of do like the beeping because it's a very quick indication that it, things are working. There we go. We are good. Back to where we want to be. All right. So what I will do here Let's put this guy back on and we'll get this guy reassembled and then we're going to start playing around with the side cart. Since everything seems to be working just fine, we are reassembled and all pretty. I didn't notice this at first, but if you can take a look here, let me zoom in a little. This spot right here, this is right over a screw hole where someone used too long of a screw. 
something to remember with the Atari STs, the front screws are shorter than the back screws. Just remember. All right. Zoom on in. Now, we're going to talk about the side cart. The side cart emulates a cartridge and a floppy disk drive and Wi-Fi. Actually provides Wi-Fi through the Raspberry Pi Pico W and is pure awesomeness. It does a lot of really neat things and allows you to turn this, this computer without a floppy disk drive into one that has a floppy disk drive without having to worry about external cables, power supplies for the floppy disk drive or GoTech or whatnot. This is a really, really quick and easy solution. If you wanted to get a floppy drive for a 520ST like this, it's at usually around 100 US dollars, 100, 150, 75 at the, at the low, low end, right? Then you need a power supply. <laughs> Hopefully the power supply works. It may or may not. You, you need to be able to get something to get power to that floppy disk drive. Then you'll need floppy disks in order to go in that. You could go the GoTech route, which is then another $40 on top of that in order to get that all set up. You also have to have a cord that connects to the floppy disk drive. Those, if you, if you, the floppy disk drive you got didn't come with one, that's usually $40 to $50 just for the cord itself. This is awesome and helps you to get past a lot of those potential barriers. So what you simply do is you put it into the cartridge port on the side of the computer here. We'll get power on. It draws its power from the computer itself, from the cartridge port that is. So no external power supply is needed for it. And we'll power on the screen. You can see it's powering on. It'll ask me to see if we can. Oh, it's already loading something. So what we're going to do here is I am going, it's loading the last image I had on there. We are going to hold on select. And there we go. Left shift to go in the configurator. And it's connecting to my Wi-Fi already. But we're not going to look at the Wi-Fi address. But you can emulate a ROM. So if you want to boot a different version of TOS or boot up a... All right, so how we're going to boot this up, I'm going to hold down the select button over here because I've used this with other computers. So this just puts us into the boot mode. I hold down shift on the keyboard. And now we are in. There are a number of different options that you have here. You can emulate a ROM image from the micro SD card. You can download one, download one from a Wi-Fi. You can do the same thing with floppy images. Uh, either use them from the micro SD card or download from a database online. I found that the, the database online is very similar to a lot of the other databases with uh, various different Atari SD floppy images. Not all of them work. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick specific ones that I know work that are already downloaded. I use the same ROM image or ROM images, the same floppy disk images that I have with Gotex. All right. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to select number three. I'll go read only. And this is this only has 512k of RAM. So we're going to pick a Silkworm because I know that that one will work on 512k RAM. And now it's loading it. And it will say, press any key to restart the computer. And then it starts loading. Boom. There we go. And it's working. All right. Now to load another floppy image. Let's zoom back out again. All right, so we'll do the same thing again. Go through the same process. Hold down the select button on the side. It would help that I had the monitor on. There we are. Okay. 
and we're going to load Dungeon Master. There we go. Now, I know that this has issues sometimes. We'll see how it goes. All right. All right. I've done this before on another computer. This image, it has some issues a little bit, as you can hear from the sound. It actually goes away soon into it. See, there it's, it's gone now. It actually boots up actually quite quick. Now, in addition to, to cartridge ROMs uh, uh, for either Emutos or a diagnostic ROM that you can download, you can also download, as you can see my finger, you can also download some ROMs that actually have games on them. I think there's a Joust and something else. I don't remember what else there was, but some simple games. Now this is booting in, and here we are. Functional Dungeon Master. Oop. We'll get, I think this is, this is Zed. We will resurrect Zed. And it works. All right. So this is an awesome, awesome device that we have here. I'm going to actually, uh, you know, let me show you one more thing. I'll show you where to download the various different images as well. There's a nice little service that's set up. You have to log into your own personal Wi-Fi. I don't want to show you my IP address. So just so you know, I'll, I'll kind of cut that off the screen. We'll hit select again, boot up. Sidecart configurator. And we're going to... Download from Floppy Images Database. Oh. Now, there we go. Lots and lots of images. Again, I found that many don't work, but that's okay. Let's try this one. 1943. Let's see if that works. It may or may not work. I just know this is, this is a game I like to play. So what it's doing is it's downloading that floppy image so you can then reboot your computer. So you don't, you don't even have to look for the floppy images, which is kind of crazy. All right, let's see if this one works. Oh, yes. It's working. Awesome. All right, I'm not the best at this game. But as you can see, this is actually a fantastic device that turns this 520ST that I just got off of eBay for less than $100 US. As you can see, still dirty. We got it working fairly simply. Now, others may not be as in such a good shape, but that said, that was relatively simple. Again, this is these side carts. Currently are selling for about being assembled for, I think you can assemble your own, but you can buy one online for approximately 30 euros or thereabouts. Add on the 
Raspberry Pi Zero W or Pico W and a, a micro SD card. You're up to about 40, 45 euros, 45, 50 dollars. For, for this, that's excellent. So you so $100, $50, you'll need some sort of a monitor. You can use the RF out if you have an RF modulator on your receiver on your TV. Um, or you can actually pick up an ST to VGA adapter. It only works with 15 kilohertz monitors. Again, do some research and you can actually work, get up and running relatively quickly. It's not, this is not super rocket science. All right. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video and uh, come back for more awesomeness. Atari awesomeness, vintage computer awesomeness. Thanks for watching.